In this video, I'm going to show you how you can analyze titration data to obtain the equivalence point on your titration curve using Excel. So I've got here a load of titration data for a weak acid and a weak base being titrated together. And what we need to do is we need to find the first derivative. And from the first derivative of your titration data, you can actually obtain a very nice graph which you can overlay with your titration curve and immediately start reading off the values for the volume at the equivalence point. And from that, you can actually work out the pH. So let's look at how you actually do this method. The first step is, of course, to find your derivative. And we want to plot this. So you're going to need an x value set of the midpoint volume. And then your y value is going to be the derivative. So let's find the midpoint volume. So to do that, you simply select this cell here. And then the formula is going to be very straightforward. You're simply going to take your first volume data point, add the second one, and then divide by two. That's going to give you the midpoint. It's kind of like an average of the two. So you select that. Then you're going to drag this all the way down to the very bottom. When you get to the bottom, there is something you need to spot. This last number is just ridiculous. It doesn't fit with the trend. So that one, you're just going to delete. So you're basically losing one data point because you've got a zero value here. So you'd be averaging zero and 20 and getting basically rubbish. So make sure you delete that point at the end. Then for your derivative, you're basically finding a kind of gradient. So you're finding the change in pH divided by the change in volume. So you need to put equals. Then we're going to have another set of brackets. So make sure you do it in the right order. Otherwise, you'll end up with the wrong sign. So you have to start with the second one here. Subtract your first pH. And then on the denominator, you're doing your second volume minus your first volume. And then press Enter on that. And of course, you want to just double click that. That's a nice shortcut. Double click that corner, and it will automatically fill it in for you. And it's deleted that last data point as well that's going to be a bit dodgy. So we've now completed all of the data for the first derivative. So that's the first major step in doing this calculation. Our next step is going to be graphing this data. And hopefully, we're going to get a nice spike where we want one. So if we select all of this, this is what we're going to graph. So I've got a lot of data here, of course. So select all this data that we want. And let's go insert and let's have a scatter graph. So of course, we get this very prominent peak here. We want to overlay on top of this some other data. And so if we go to select data, and then we select add, that will give us the option to add another data set. So I want to select some x values. So we're going to put all of our volumes. So select all the volumes here. Select that button there. Then I want to go back up to the top. And then our y values, we're going to have the pH. And don't worry if you get a very, very messy graph that looks completely mad. I'm going to show you how to fix that in a second. So there we go. Select OK, OK. And if we go up to the top, we've got this ridiculous graph. You can see that the other series kind of looks right. It looks like the shape of a pH curve. But this is just like way off because the scale is being thrown by this ridiculous peak here. So if you select this, so you're selecting that data set. And then if you right click, then you can select format data series. And if you click secondary axis, now things look much, much more sensible. So you've got a way more sensible graph there. And now we can start analyzing this and actually come up with our equivalence point. The last step is to actually analyze our graph to obtain our final answer. So immediately when you look at this graph, you should be seeing this number 10. And this is going to give you a good indication of roughly what the answer is going to be. Though, of course, you could not dream of actually reading the exact value off by eye, but you're going to be thinking about a volume of around 10. We want to find the peak of the derivative plot. And so there's various ways to do it. One of the quickest ways is to simply add data labels 
And if I take the values at the very top and start pulling them apart, so that's not the highest value, so try this one. And we work out that the very highest point on this plot is coming out to be 201.8. So we need to go through our data and find where that value occurs. So we scroll through and there it is there. So you're looking at 9.99998. So if you remember that number, we need to see where that matches up on our data. And it's somewhere between the 79th and 80th data point. And it is quite sensitive here. You can see that there's quite a large jump in pH in terms of the second decimal place and the third decimal place. So you want to be a bit careful about that. So we can actually drill down a little bit further. So we know that we're looking for this number here. And we know that that occurs somewhere between here. So we can actually go insert. And then if we put a scatter graph, so scatter graph like that, it obviously plots it the wrong way around. So you've got pH on this axis. So if we select that and we switch that around, that's going to give us things in the right order. So we need to select there, add a trend line. So it's going to give us a nice line to read off. So let's remind ourselves of the value we are looking for. So we're looking for 9.9998. So pretty much. There's another eight there, so you're never going to get it exact, but I think reading it off about there at 8.7 pH is a fairly reasonable answer. So there is your answer. So your volume is going to be this value and your pH is going to be about 8.7 when you read that off. So I hope this video was helpful to you and you now know how to find your equivalence point on a titration graph. Finally, thank you very much for watching.